as beautiful, seamless, and overall simple this chapter was, I am very much worried for Chainsaw Man Part 2. I'm scared. The reason for this is that when it comes to Fujimoto and how he writes his stories, when he starts to pull two characters closer together, when they start to intertwine with each other's lives mentally and emotionally, there is a meter that slowly builds up over time, and before you know it, one of those characters that you've come to love, that you've seen Fujimoto pull together so beautifully, is going to pass away, is going to perish is going to break the story and this relationship in the most heart-wrenching way possible. Unfortunately, this is what I see, and this is why I am worried. I don't want to see it, but knowing how Fujimoto likes to operate, this always has to be in the back of our mind. And when you have a beautiful chapter like this that's bringing Asa and Denji closer together and sharing such an intimate moment and genuinely getting along for the first time, it's so incredibly lovely, but it's shrouded by that Fujimoto darkness lingering in the background, just waiting to snap you up. Before I talk about the chapter, I want to mention something pretty important. There has been very detailed leaks of the past three chapters. At first, a lot of people thought it was fake because how would you get leaks for digital manga? Turns out all of them were very accurate and very true. Now, I'm not going to tell you how you should indulge within Chainsaw Man, but one of the best experiences that I've had personally is completely avoiding leaks. It has been normal for myself over the years that I've been doing content to float around leaks. Some people even make videos on them. Some people are reading full chapters four to five days before the official chapter. That's entirely up to you. All I could say is try not to spread those leaks to anyone else that doesn't want to see it and try to support the official manga as much as you can. I have found such a joy and appreciation for reading the chapters every single week when they release online. And I've only been able to experience this with a handful of stories because Jump Plus is the only place that does them digitally. Kaiju number eight, Spy Family, Dan Da Dan, and Chainsaw Man Part 2 are just a small handful of stories that are so refreshing to read because there's no leaks for them whatsoever. So it's a little bit disappointing for myself to see such detailed leaks. It was bound to happen eventually, even though I don't know how. But personally, I hope they kind of weed it out or it doesn't start to become a consistent thing where you're going to see leaks for chapters upon chapters ahead of time. With that out of the way, there is a lot to love about this chapter, a lot to appreciate, especially when it comes to the conversation between Denji and Asa. However, I will say I adore the opening for this chapter. Benny's brother, sister, sibling, whoever it is, uh, is kind of just there licking the glass, the condensation off the aquarium, and you have Denji and Asa sitting in front of them. I don't know why this is such a compelling opening, mostly because it's so bizarre and just there happening while there's like a pretty deep conversation happening. This is relationship building 101. We were going to get it eventually in some way, shape or form, but we're getting it here and I love it, especially because it brings out a lot of Denji that we have haven't seen in quite some time, and it brings out a new side of Asa that is a lot more compelling. Her character feels genuine appreciation for once, genuine happiness, genuine approval. Think about these two characters for a moment and what they've been through. Think about Denji, you don't really need much of an explanation for that, but just think of his childhood, what he's gone through, and then think of the entirety of Chainsaw Man Part 1. He's lost a lot, he's dealt with a lot, and Part 2, it has shown that he has grown a lot, and there's certain moments of this dialogue that confirm some very valuable things. Now think of Asa. She's lost her family. She's on her own. She can't make friends. She's socially awkward. She's all over the place mentally and emotionally and she's traumatized by the past as well. Now when it comes to trauma, you're never meant to compare. And we're not going to compare Denji and Asa's difficulties of the life they've faced, but there is a ton of similarities. There's a ton of development issues, a ton of uh, development problems that can be healed through interaction, through companionship, through love. It's one of the primary resources of healing trauma in specific ways. Obviously, it's completely different for every single individual, but what they both want and what they both need is funny enough each other. They just don't know it yet. But what we have here is the very early stages of that companionship, and it is glorious. Asa is within this negative spiral. They're on their final legs, but Denji still has this life to him. He's perfectly fine with this situation. He's eating the starfish and trying to figure out what can and can't be done, but he's actually walking Asa through the process of trying to help her. He's doing it in his own way, but there's something very attentive about that. He's genuinely showing concern for Asa, even though it may not be on his face, but his choice of words is very vital. He's asking questions. He's keeping Asa mentally busy so she doesn't deteriorate into this spiral of depression, which everyone else is currently going through. Hence the theoretical Kobeni sibling at the beginning licking the glass, a nice opener for what to 
expect. So Denji is supplying this information. He's asking these questions and he's giving genuine answers and things that can be done to cook the starfish. And he goes about it in a really good way. This gets Asa talking back and while they're waiting for this food to be cooked, she starts asking questions of her own. So you get this back and forth situation. Denji being curious and compassionate about Asa and the situation she's in and then Asa returning the favor by being curious herself. This curiosity leads us to the question, why is Denji obsessed with money? Asa wants to know. And Denji's answer is probably the most mature, self-observant, beautiful answer that he could actually give. And I want to quote this directly. I've got this sort of friend, sort of little sister living with me. She's smart enough to go to college. I'm saving up for her tuition. College is crazy expensive, right? A lot of you are probably flipping out right now. When you read the chapter, finally we're getting acknowledgement of Naoyata. But for me, what is so lovely about this statement is that this is how far Denji is thinking in the future. And the reason he's thinking that far is because he compared Nayuta's life with his own. He wants to give her a normal life. He wants to give her all of the things that he never had. It's not only an inspiring thing, but it's so much growth. We knew Denji had matured quite a bit, but this is exponential. This is incredible. This is him showing so much more compassion to people that have been thrown onto him. And Naoyuta was thrown onto him and he's grown so accustomed to her that he's doing everything within his life to provide a future for her, to send her to college. This has made him recognize his own past, his own trauma, so that in itself is a step towards healing. He can recognize that his past life was really bad and that he doesn't want other people to go through that experience. Absolutely beautiful. Couldn't get better than this. So they would start to eat some of the starfish, but it's not enough. And quickly Ars would recognize that she needs more, which she looks over at the fish that Denji has dried and partially cooked, and she's going to eat that. Now, originally, we all know that she doesn't want to eat fish. She feels bad about it. She doesn't like the texture, etc. But she tries to muscle through it. It does not end well. She eats it, but she's gagging and almost throwing up, and she's struggling to get it down. But she knows to survive, this is what has to be done. What's important about this moment for myself is, I guess, not only Ars's determination to obviously survive, she hasn't completely given up as of yet, which it seemed like it was in the previous chapter. She's willing to go to these lengths. But secondly, obviously Denji's reaction. He finds this funny. He finds this entertaining. And he even expresses this to Asa by saying that, yeah, your words are kind of boring, but you're interesting to watch. You're kind of funny. And she runs with this. It actually snaps her out of this depressive state that she's in. And a way that you can kind of see this pretty accurately is her eyes. She'll have the deadpan, blankest, black eyes that you see throughout this whole chapter, and they will barely change. However, as soon as Denji says this, her eyes change. They brighten up. They become normal once again. And then she starts to get this confidence fueling back inside of her. I have come to really love this about her because it's super awkward. She doesn't know how to handle compliments, so she kind of turns into this obnoxious know-it-all. Like, yeah, I am an interesting woman. I am fun. I'm glad you noticed. You have good eyes. Not only do I think this is funny to see, but I also feel it's a bit of a coping mechanism. She doesn't get complimented often, and she doesn't know how to handle those said compliments. So if it does eventually arrive, how do you think she would handle it? Pretty much exactly this way, to shield herself and to ride off this high that she might have. I'm sure a lot of you are going to love Denji's response to this. He says, that attitude that you have right now reminds me of an old friend, which is obviously a reference to power. And you look at Asa's kind of overconfidence, playful nature that she blows up into just randomly, put it right beside power, and they're basically identical. They're very similar. And it's lovely to see Denji smiling. He's having fun with Asa. He's remembering some of the past and we haven't seen him do that all too often. So these are massive steps towards their relationship building. And Denji seems kind of hooked onto her because the rest of this chapter is him following her around and taking her orders. And she's not doing it in this overly aggressive mean way, but still within that confidence attitude that Denji said that he liked. So she's going to try and not necessarily milk it, but be within it as much as possible. This little montage here is kind of like the perfect amalgamation of these two seeing eye to eye for the first time and really enjoying themselves within the moment. And you get these beautiful panels of them just having a blast going through all of these rooms and getting all the money they can possible. And I will say that the close up of their faces with them smiling at each other, Asa has hearts in her eyes. Within this moment, she seems genuinely smitten by Denji. She's having fun, but he's able to pull her out of that depressive state so easily. This chapter as a whole does a lot to show how flippant 
Haas's personality is. On one hand, it can be fickle, and another, it can be so solidified and grounded, and it just jumps back and forth all over the place, and you never know what type of emotional state she's going to produce. And then she builds this confidence within herself to make an aquarium spear. We don't know how this operates. We don't even know if this will work. Theoretically, it should, because even though Yoru technically isn't there to speak with her, she's still a part of Asa's body. There's a real sense of awareness in these final moments, what she has to do to turn something into a weapon. She's concentrating, she's evaluating her perspective, and doing a lot to build as much guilt as possible to the innocent animal she's about to turn into a spear. And while this brings the chapter to a close, it opens up so much more for a very beautiful, fruitful relationship between Asa and Denji, but also towards herself. She starts to recognize herself and understand herself little by little. But I love this chapter. We do have another one next week, and I am all for this Asa Denji duo. I'm gonna be honest, even though it was said that Denji is a supporting secondary character within Chainsaw Man Part 2, I do not care in the slightest. Yeah, the story is called Chainsaw Man, but look at all of this stunning character development and growth that we have gotten in under 20 chapters. It's so personal and intimate and methodical, it is stellar, and I am all for it. But I want to hear all of your thoughts right now.